I am so excited today. I've got this. It's an IPS screen, brand new screen to go into an original Game Boy. We've got this battered old thing that we're going to totally revive. Uh, stick around and take a look. We'll see how it turns out. As you know, I'm not a fan of big, long, talky intros that explain what I'm going to do. I'm going to show you what I end up with at the end of this video. Uh, this is my latest custom build Game Boy. It's got an IPS screen inside it. It's one of the latest ones to just come out. I installed it in this cool <laughs> retro looking case. Um, not seen any brown Game Boys before, so here's a first. And I'll show you a quick look at what I end up with. And then I'll go through the process of the build. I hope you enjoy it. Right, let's take a look then. So this screen is absolutely awesome. It's the same as the original size screen. Um, if you look slightly from the sides, you can maybe see a little bit of the frame, but if you look straight on, it's absolutely perfect. Um, the build is got the original Game Boy inside, um, a brand new front panel with this screen attached, and this contrast dial has now been replaced with a new one that if we turn up and down, it can adjust the brightness of the screen. So we can make it dim, we can make it bright. And also the coolest bit is if you press on that button, it actually swaps between a number of different backlit palettes. Look at that. So we've got yellow, we've got purple, we've got the black and white. We've got sort of white, yellow and pink, a white, yellow and purple, a blue one that you can hardly see. Uh, an awesome looking green one that's just like your proper old school Game Boy, a red one that's probably going to give you a headache, and a nice looking yellow one too. So it just cycles through all those when you're pressing the buttons, and you can change, as I said, the brightness on there too. It's a really great crisp looking screen, and this video will talk you through how to install one yourself, and also while you're at it, how to create a whole new custom Game Boy with extra parts too. Right, first we'll take a look at the kit. Uh, I've ordered this one from eBay. Um, came in a nice little plastic case to protect it, which is good. And then bubble wrapped inside there too. So. What we've got is the screen itself which is quite a, a wide screen. It's actually going to be installed vertically and you can see on the PCB here exactly where that's going to go. Now this is a whole brand new thing to me. Uh, instead of having the screen which goes on top of the existing PCB, this is a whole new front circuit board that will attach to the rear one that we'll look at a little bit more later on. We've got the, the start select, A, B, up, down, left, right for all the controls. We've got this controller here, which controls the display, which again we'll look at later. Uh, also comes with these sticky parts here. And inside the packet, where the screen is, we've got a few other parts as well. There's a controller board and some ribbons. Be careful getting those out. So there's this extra board, the screen itself, which I think I'll keep in the pouch for now. So the screen's just got one small ribbon on there, so that'll go back in. That's caught on the back a bit. There we go. Get that back in safely. And then the other two ribbon, this one very much like the one inside the Game Boy itself. Then this smaller ribbon and this extra PCB here. So let's take a look at the Game Boy that all this is going to go in. So here's the console we are going to rescue. This is typical of many really beaten up examples. There's no cover on the batteries. Um, it does work, um, but it's like faded. It's brown almost. There's all dust on the screen. And also when we load, crucially, it does work. It does load the games as it's doing there. However, in terms of the display, uh, we've got a lot of vertical lines and crucially one horizontal line across here on the display. I'm not sure quite how visible that is, but believe me, it is not going to be great when it comes to trying to play on this. So what we're going to do is we'll use the rear PCB and a few of the other bits and pieces to create our new Game Boy. So I know that that works. The crucial uh, checklist that I need is, does it work? 
Does it load the games? So the cartridge slot's okay. Is it powered? Are there any issues with the batteries? That's all okay. Uh, does the sound work? Yes, it does, because we'll be using the speaker from the front board. So although it is lacking in many ways, this has got everything that we need for the project that I am going to carry out. And next up, the other parts. Now, I've made one recently that was very authentic in terms of its presentation, in terms of it using the original grey shell and maroon buttons and grey screen and so on. So I wanted to do something a bit different this time. So I've gone with something very different to anything I've done before. I've ordered my parts from Deadpan Robot in the UK. If you're based in the UK, I can't recommend them highly enough. And they do ship overseas as well. So if you're interested in buying parts for building custom Game Boys, they would be highly recommended from me what I've bought is like I say I've gone unusual with the colors this time I've got a brown shell and I've got combinations of yellow and orange buttons and a black uh, glass screen lens for going over the screen going for a really sort of 70s vibe to the color scheme on this one it may look hideous uh, it may look awesome I'm hoping for awesome uh, but we'll see how that goes right next job is to dismantle the Game Boy and take apart the bits that we need from it Well, that was a job. I can tell it was one that was worth replacing. I had to completely shave off the top of one of the screws because it rusted up completely and wouldn't come off. Uh, also, the <laughs> there was a little beastie inside there. Something long dead that I found inside there. A little insect, which is always lovely. The worst thing I ever found in anything was a human tooth inside a Sega Master System, so it could have been worse. Anyway, let's have a look at the parts that we're going to need to keep in this case. So, there's the back half of the unit, which actually, thankfully, based on the state of the front half, I'm glad that seems all fine. As we saw before, the power switch works, the uh, game cartridge socket works, the sound is all fine. I'm going to do a quick pro sound mod on this one as well, which just involves cutting off a couple of wires and rewiring the headphone socket up to the volume pot there, which should be quite a quick job. We need the battery connectors, we need the uh, ground shield that goes into the back shell, and also uh, I've got the original silicon parts. I don't need the start and select because I'm putting coloured one in. I do have replacement silicon parts if I need them, but I generally tend to try and use the originals if I can. I'll see how that goes. I might swap those over later, but that's all the parts I need. Plus, I've kept hold of all of my spare screws. I've got, again, a bag of new screws that came with my shell if I need them, um, but I might be better off using the originals. We'll see. So, that's what I've got, and now it's ready to start doing the build. Almost forgot the other bit that I need just from this front board. Obviously, that's no good anymore. Everything else is done. Um, so, what we need is this part here, the speaker. So, I'll just desolder that. All I need to do is just apply a little bit of pressure to the wires, give them a wiggle and they should remove with the soldering iron melt and the solder on the back. So that's done. We've got the speaker ready to attach to the new front. Okay, before I start putting things in place, there is a little bit of cutting required on the shell, namely the front part of the shell. So we'll move the back out of the way for now and take a little look inside. Now there's a number of posts here that originally will have attached the main motherboard for the Game Boy, but of course this being slightly different, the board itself will sit in here uh, and there's some cuts to be made below where that goes and also the screen itself, where the screen is going to go, it's going to sit vertically in here. So there's a few parts that need cutting out, namely so it can sit flat at the top, I need to remove this ridge here and also these two screw posts. Uh, apparently I need to remove these two as well. Um, and then there's a, a couple of bits off the back shell as well. So I'll get onto that one next. First, I'll just remove these. Okay, so you can see there, I've removed the post from here and here 
and here and here and also from these little parts where the on off switch goes I've removed that section there I've also cleaned out all the excess plastic so that is ready to go now we move on to the back half of the shell and there's just a little bit that needs removing for where the contrast dial goes I think so if that was in position and we were looking at it from the front where that is going to end up going that kind of bumps into it there so I just need to remove that little bit of plastic that sticks out there not much at all in fact looking at it and looking at how that's going to be removed I think I may be better with a knife in this case and try and just slice across it neatly okay so that's left me with a much cleaner finish there so now I think that is my shell prepared so it's time to move forward with putting the actual parts together so let's start with the back shell I've got everything that I need so the shell is here the actual motherboard and the other parts are here what I'm going to do is install the ground shield I'm going to put the power switch in place I think I'm going to go with an orange one um, and I've got to remove a couple of wires here and replace them with these wires that I've got there to get a nice smooth fit I think I'm also going to file out a little bit of this so let's get that done Alright, so that's now all together. The back panel is in place. Uh, we've trimmed the bit we need for the other potentiometer afterwards. That is all screwed back in place. Everything's secure in here. Uh, I've taken out the two wires from the left, replaced them with these two on the right going up there. Everything's neat. Everything fits in place. So now we're ready to set up the front panel. Right, we're going to move on in a moment to attaching the screen inside the shell but first a word about this circuit board here attaching to that ribbon i'm not going to lie to you that was an absolute pain to get attached i've ended up damaging kits in the past by trying to force things or being impatient so i stopped filming and took my time it didn't actually end up needing forcing in i just needed to get it for just the right angle to slot in you lift up the little black tab slot it in clip it down but it took me so long to get it lined up but I just wanted to say if you're trying one of these yourself don't feel like you have to force it it will line up and slot in easily it's just trying to get it to line up was really tricky so that's attached I'm not going to take it out and put it back in again to show you how to do it because I'm not convinced I'd be able to get it back in so that's in there safely now I'm going to leave that in place that will eventually fold over the back to here but what we need to do now is line up the screen in this spot here for the front so it actually goes in vertically which is part of the reason why we cut some of these parts out before and you need to try and get it lined up just right so you can't see that side of the screen nor that side of the screen so i'm going to try and carefully do that and it needs to line up exactly with the top of the shell so i think what i'll do is get some of the double-sided tape that came with the kit and put a strip across here and across here to keep those held in place all right so that's the double-sided tape in place now it's time to remove the um, protective film from the screen carefully and then try to position that as centrally as possible in here now what I might do is drop that edge in keep it on an angle so it's not touching the sticky tape turn it over try and line up as best I can there and just nudge it into position like that that I think is your safest way to make sure it's all lined up neatly there the double sided tape should hold it in place on the back there but I would then secure it with more tape now with the instructions it does state about using more of this this double sided tape for going over there um, but it looks a little untidy so I'm going to try it with some capped on tape instead
Right, so that's in position. Uh, next bits that I need are for the other ribbons. Now, this panel goes in place here and the ribbon that connects that one is the smaller one of the two that came with the kit. It's this one here. So that will attach into this slot here. Again, I get the feeling this might be tricky. You just take your time with stuff like this. There we go, that's slotted in no problem at all. Flip the little catch over and that is in place. Now we're looking at our speaker. So if it's facing the front, um, the speaker itself I've got here, it's still got the wires attached. So I'll get those in position and pop those in there. They fit through fine. Just bend them over slightly so they don't fall out. And get my soldering iron. Find some soft solder. Still got some from before. And carefully solder that onto there. And that one to there. Nice and secure, give it time to set. Okay, so with the speaker attached to the front board, that is ready to go into my front shell. So the front shell's set up. I've got my buttons in place. I'll put the silicon parts in. Now what you'll find is, if you put all the buttons in and then lay it flat, it'll knock the buttons from this side and all that will come out. So it helps to have something to support it on. Uh, so I'll just take this screwdriver in this case and balance it there. Now I need to get this ready for attaching. It's gonna go that way. So I'll bring the ribbon up and over, carefully slot it into position, bring over the little black clip, and that will just lock it in place. That looks like it's a little bit wonky, so I'll undo that, line it up better, bring over the clip again. That looks much more secure, so just watch out for that. Everything seems to be in place now. Let's see if I can line up and put the speaker in place. Main thing you want to be watching out for here is that as you put it down, the, the ribbon's not twisting too much. It looks like it's generally positioned okay there. Uh, now we're ready to start screwing back together. Now, unlike the original front board where we've got screw holes all over the place for attaching it, in this case, I've only got a few smaller ones to put in place. So it's just uh, six holes. We've got just, not those, okay. Just these one, two, three, four, five, six holes. And I've still got my original screws. So I think I'm gonna put those in. And having the screwdriver in place there helps. But once I've got the first couple of screws in, shouldn't be an issue because that will hold it in place. So I'll carefully put that one in. Cut in a new thread into the plastic here, so I'll take my time and be careful not to over tighten. All right, so now we need to connect the two halves with this ribbon. Now, originally uh, the front panel had a ribbon attached and there was just one that needed to slot in here, uh, but now we've got two openings. So I'm gonna start with the, the fresh one here on the front, so we'll move the back to the side here. We need to be able to see the, the blue part of the ribbon. So I'll try to line up with the opening as best I can there. Take your time when doing this. A slight wiggle should slot it in place. Just a slight side to side. There we go. So that's gone securely in place. Now with that being a brand new part, that's going to be a slightly tighter fit than the original. So I would suggest, hopefully I've got this right, we'd start with the new part and then swing around and, and slot into the other one should be a little bit easier. In fact, if you're used to modding Game Boys, you'll be used to attaching that one afterwards into the back shell. So let's see if I can get that in position without doing any bending. Okay, so that's in place. That was a bit awkward. And we'll do a test switch on to see if it works. 
fingers crossed. That looks pretty good. Looks nice and solid actually. So now what I'm going to do is put the whole shell back together, put the screws in place and then we'll go from there in terms of applying our front screen. And here we are, all done and ready to test. I want to test it just before I put the screen cover on. Uh, so I've got my Tetris game put that in place. Tetris is a great one for testing with because you can see that you've got all four shades correct but that looks really really crisp. So if I'm looking there go one two three four all those shades and also one of the features of this that really sells it is where the contrast dial is there. Unlike on the original Game Boy where you change the contrast simply up or down uh, when this one moves you can rotate to make it brighter or dimmer and you can press it to change your color palette so we'll press that in there and again now what's happened there is i've pressed in and it's it's jammed it's actually got stuck i'll put a finger under it it should lift out and i might be able to press again and it'll change but that's not how it should work there we go i rotated it and it popped out what i might need to do is it there we go change it to the blue palette and the green and the red that seems okay now if it continues sticking uh what i'll do is just open it up and trim that part slightly alternatively what i could do and what i think i'll try now is i'll just undo the screw here and here just like a quarter turn to take some of that pressure off here so I can rotate for brightness can make it dim um, brighter and just by pressing it swapping between those different color palettes is awesome they're kind of there's two multicolored ones and then it's like all blue which is a bit dark even if we turn it up bright that looks a bit too dark um, the green looks amazing that looks like proper old-school Game Boy style uh, the red looks much much better than a, a backlit red one uh, with the previous style panels uh, the sort of yellowy green looks really nice and I think it's actually a really good match for this color scheme on here um, purple looks all right the black and white is probably the one I'm going to be using the most the gray scale but the other two that's like a pinks and yellows which works quite nicely with this one just having the option works really well um, right so now it's time to put the cover on now what i usually like doing with these before i put the protective glass cover over i like to switch on because sometimes you get a little bit of a static discharge and all these bits of fluff or hair that you couldn't see before suddenly appear on the screen and there's not much on there at the moment not much in the way of anything any debris um, i can give it a slight brush at the edges and this little fan brush just to see if there's anything um, but you can't really brush things off because you're in a recessed area now there's a tiny tiny little speck of dust on that side so what I tend to do is get a little bit of masking tape fold it back on itself and use the edge just to pick up any random bits so there's a part of the side there just tap on there and it'll pick that up any other specks of dust it's just the easiest way to pick them up without disturbing anything else without putting any fingerprints anywhere and without just simply moving them to the side you know if they've got stuck on there you've definitely moved them out of the way now my glass screen cover so i'll peel the back off that And then remove the window part get that in position again while it's switched on helps a little bit looks pretty good just make sure that's all stuck get a microfiber cloth and just apply a little bit of pressure all the way around before I remove the film I 
That looks all right from both sides. And there we go, all done. If you look from one side and the other, you can kind of see it light up, but looking directly ahead, no problem at all. Let's see what color palette goes best with this one. Let's go with that yellow one, I like that. So there we go, all done. Um, my new custom Game Boy. Um, the sound work, let's see. There we go, so we're all all right. So there we have it, how cool is that? I'm made up with this build, I think it's a really cool screen. Uh, it's nice to have the screen a larger size too. Um, I'm looking forward to giving it a bit of testing and if you've got any questions, anything I seem to skim over while I was going through the process, you need any clarification, again, just let me know in the comments. Anybody else tried out these screens? What did you think? How did you find the process? Let me know. I'm looking forward to hearing from you.